Kanoko, is the harem anime I've always seen for the past few years. When I truly started to seriously watch anime five years back, thanks to PewDiePie's Corpse Party walkthrough. Until 2015, I was mostly busy keeping up with ongoing shonen like Naruto and Bleach. But now I got way smarter, and I watch harem edgy anime. That's always what I'm after, and the edgy genre has plenty of it. Before making a full lot of myself by creating these videos, I made it my personal goal to watch all dub H.E. Harry Mame there is, and yet Kanokon managed to elude my attention. Now that I finally gave it a try, I gotta admit that there ain't much harem to speak of. Sure, there are a lot of Harry Mame tropes and archetypes regarding the female classmates of the main character, but only two are truly interested in him. That if you're not counting the milk. That part reminds me of Onega teacher, by the way. You were getting in our way before. Oh, I was not getting in your way. Forget it. Yes, let's face it, he's very nice, Maho. Thank you. Mother, please don't hang all over him. At the main chick, is insecure in front of her mother, is afraid she will steal her boyfriend. Wow, so realistic. And so very smart. There are also twins in this show. Awesome. You gotta be kidding me! I love me some lovely twins. Ever since Kiss Exists. <sighs> since I become something I'm always hoping to see in a harem anime. Again, this reminds me of one of guy twins. I, Karen Onodera, experienced a kiss with Mr. Mike Kamishiro, who just may be my relative. Although here, they have similar personalities. What happened to her when she drank it, her spiritual power sealed in? And are definitely blood related. I like the retro feel of the show. It has all the bad aspects of the early harem genre. 2008 then, that year was awesome. We had Love Rule, Rosella Vampire, Sekirai, and I found out that Kanakon also came out the same year. The late 2000s are the best time for anime. Trust me, fellows. I do a lot of academic research. When I said that Kanokon has all the worst elements of the harem genre combined into one entity, I wasn't joking. Everything is so dumb and painful to watch. Just my type of anime. Uh, I... You have to punish me then. What's the punishment going to be? <laughs> the main cat is an underdeveloped teenage boy who for some reason has got the attention for a ridiculously hot and voluptuous girl. This used to be a problem in the late 2000s and early 2010s until High School DxD came along and proved that the Harem King can benefit from being overpowered and perverted. <clears throat> Listen close. I have a dream that one day I'll rank so high that I become the Harem King. I'll have one group of hot girls with huge jugs as servants and another for my babe army. Oh yeah! Until then, the mainstream mindset for the protagonist was making me secure and a complete idiot in regard with women. A lot of these ideas can be seen here, and yet there is a certain appeal in regard with this particular boy. Most harem and sis shy away from touching girls, and some don't even get to kiss the one they like, which is a shame, and these insecurities often leave me frustrated by the end of the season. Here, however, Kota actually gets busy with Chizuru. Naturally, it is a chick who initiates physical contact with him, but he does not run away from fondling her boobs, maybe because he's too weak to escape and deny her the pleasure. Uh, but still, I like seeing how the main character is actually looking at boobs instead of averting his eyes from such a beautiful sight. Chizuru likes to show her body a lot, which is incredible. I have a thing for tall slender brunettes with straight hair, big boobs, so she is fine. For my standard. Pale skin, almond eyes, a tall, slender build. But that wasn't all. Unfortunately, she's only interested in a teenage boy, 
person yet experienced puberty. So <laughs> I think I might have missed my chance. That's sad and all, but I guess I can enjoy the show. Apparently, Chizuru is a spirit, a nine-tailed fox yokai, to be more specific. Chizuru basically goes super sane when she transforms, even her hair color changes to blonde. What's wrong, Kota? Oh, what's that? <gasps> I prefer her as a brunette, and yeah, we doubt the tails. They suddenly get in the way of having fun. But I guess it panders to the increasingly shocking number of furry lovers in the anime community. Dude, I like cat girls just fine. In fact, some of my waifus have feline ears and a tail. Well, welcome back, Oni. But dinosaurs, frogs, and spiders aren't really healthy for a human. Trust me, I do a lot of research. You know what I mean. <laughs> Chizuru acts like the main love interest in Haramame. She's clueless, sensitive, and rather forward. So the protagonist. Please take care of me this year too. Kind of like Lala and Mocha, but without dyed hair. I guess this is the easiest way to stretch a romance by having the girl be obviously interested in the guy, while he finds whatever lame excuse not to make sweet, wild love with her. You can do whatever you want with me. You have to take care of your body. Besides, we're only in high school, and. Uh, uh, Gotta admit, Kota has the best reason not to get late that I ever heard. Apparently he's in high school, therefore he wants to wait and not get busy with his female classmate. Can't say I blame him. You get her pregnant, you are stuck washing dishes for the rest of your miserable life. Way to happy feelings. The show has the right episodic structure. There is a certain continuity between events, but we are mostly dealing with a um, with a new idea every single episode. Not much special when it comes to the story though. We have spirits that coexist with humans, and some are bad, some are useless, and some are hot. Yeah. Not exactly Shakespearean level of writing, but in these type of shows, it's mostly the characters that matter in the thematic, interesting way they interact with each other. Well, I specified before, this show makes every mistake possible for a harem anime. The most interactions between Kota and Shizuru, a classic failed attempt to flirt with each other. The way Kanokon so shamelessly portrays certain archetypes is kind of refreshing. As much as I like Shizuru, I have to say, she sounds and acts kind of dumb, even compared to the low standard of the clueless anime girl I came to love and treasure. If an insecure little boy be molested by an attractive schoolgirl, it's fun and all. And yet the show decided to introduce one more major player to the mix. Nozomo is a fellow lolly and a wolf spirit. Naturally she's as well interested in the main character. And a love triangle begins, where Chizuru is cheerful and naughty. Nozomo is silent and tries to show restraint. Although secretly, she's perverted as well. This is way too similar to day to life. I mean Toka is basically Chizuru with a wild temper in Voluptuous Body, while Nozomu resembles Origami with her cold demeanor and the blank way she stares at the protagonist. It doesn't bother me or anything. Also how they fight amongst each other for his affection is also a strong theme in both anime. Little Life came quite a bit later, therefore I say between these two, Kanokon is the first one to start with this certain rivality. But I'm not done making connections to the other titles. You see, Shizuru and Kota can combine their powers and fight as one, just like Kazuya and Kiriha from Tsugumamo. The jig possesses the guy and he becomes a badass for a short period of time. Again, Kanokon did it first. Man, this anime might be even more influential than I ever considered. The closest thing to a story arc would be the moment when Shizuru's breast gets smaller. I know, even the cat arcs resume around the tits and ass. Anyhow, it was kind of cool to see how Kota liked her 
no matter how big her chest was. It sounds simple and cliche, but it kind of emphasized how the main character cares as much for her personality as it does for her body. Otherwise, most other arcs are focused on isolated funny events that either happen in school or the hot springs Kota and Shizuru visited. There are a bunch of secondary characters left to talk about. From them, the ones that stand out the most would be Chizuru's brother, the class representative, and the silent twin sisters. The class representative is the classic control freak archetype, just like Chisako from Tsukumamo or Yui Kotegawa from the Tulovro franchise. Although, unlike these other examples, she does not seem to have any feelings for the main character. She is there to be bossy and to ruin the fun of impure relationships that might occur in a school perimeter. Chizuru's brother takes her liking to her, but has had a hard time confessing his feelings due to her harsh exterior and imposing personality. This was a fun little side romance, which does end with a little bit of hope, but they don't end up nowhere near as close as Chizuru and the main character. This foxy lady is in heat, and she uses all her skill to make Kota acknowledge her feelings. Speaking about females in heat, the protagonist also gets to spend a few minutes with Shizuru's mother, a well-developed woman, in great shape, and with even bouncier boobs. Now, of course, in typical anime fashion, she also tries to seduce the poor innocent boy. Well, I do kind of envy him. Who cares that you look like a child while still in high school, as long as you get to fondle so many hot young ladies? Anyhow, what I liked about his relationship with Shizuru is how much they actually touch and kiss each other. Funny enough, this is actually pretty rare in a high anime. The last characters introduced are the twins. At first they seem very quiet and kind of insignificant to the overall plot, but as the show progresses, the twins get more screen time, they even act as shinobi later into the story. They still don't talk much, and yet eventually they open their hearts to Chizuru and Kota. Alright, I give Kanokon, a surprising 8 out of 10. Now I admit the show has major issues, but as I said before, all the missteps it takes only end up working in favor of its entertaining value.